All right, so in this class, we're going to be creating a character lighting rig. So you can download the character model that's available on the class page. Or if you took the model in class, you can use the model that you already created. So I'm just going to open up my model. All right, so here we have the character model that we were working on in the modeling class. And we're going to create a lighting rig for this character. So the first thing we need to do is create a cage to attach our lights to. So we're going to go to Polygon, the Polygon shelf, and create a box. We're going to scale that up so that it encompasses the entire character. Let's go to our four panel view and we can hit F in each panel or Shift A to frame all. Alright, so in the side view, we're just going to look in the side view here and we're going to scale this up. And you can go to wireframe, just hit 4 on the keyboard and just scale it up so that the box is over his head and the bottom of the box just sits below his feet. So something like that is fine. Alright, so we're just going to use this polygon box as a guide to create a NURBS curve cage. All right, so you can go in shaded mode. It's a little easier to see what you're doing. And let's go to create, and we're gonna choose under curve tools, we're gonna choose the CV curve tool. So now we have our CV curve tool activated. And you wanna turn on your snap to points right here. Let's hide the character's eyes, head, and hair. We'll do this in shaded mode. So we'll snap it to the first point, and then we'll snap it to the second point. You wanna click this at least three or four times just so you don't get, we're going to go to the second one. If you click it once and go to the next one, you're going to notice that you get this, this uh, spline curve. So we don't want that. We want to click this at least three or four times so that our curve stays straight. One, two, three, just and see, until you see this white area gone. Okay, so we did the top part already. If you make a mistake, you can just control Z. Just keep going till you've gone all the way around the cube. Sometimes you may need to backtrack. You just want to make sure you get every edge. It's good to do it in shaded view so you can see the blue lines. And then you want to enter that once you're done. Now you can select the polygon cube and move it away. And actually you can just delete it, but we'll just move it away to make sure that we got our cage properly done. And we'll just delete the, the polygon cube. We don't need that anymore. It was just a guide. All right, so this is our page that we're gonna use. So you can turn off snap to points. All right, so now we're gonna snap four directional lights, one to each corner. So let's go to our rendering shelf here and we'll create a directional light. Let's create four. We're just gonna move each one close to each corner for now and then we'll snap them to each corner. And let's create a spotlight. This will be the light that we use for the shadow of the character. All right, so for the spotlight, we're gonna rotate that down so it faces straight down. We'll just go to our channel box and change the rotate X to minus 90. And let's increase the cone angle. You can just click on the attribute and middle mouse button virtual drag. So now we need to use the curve snap to snap each one of these directional lights to the corner of the cage. So you can turn on the curve snap here you can focus in with your F key. If you grab the center of the move tool, you'll see that it'll snap to the curve. Since we already have our snap on, I'm just gonna go through and snap all those to the corner now. All right, so now we can turn off our snap to curves. And the next thing we wanna do is angle these directional lights in. You can see where there's little points on one side and that's the direction the light's gonna be emitted from. So we want to rotate these and angle them in toward where the character is going to be standing. So we can point them down on a 45 degree angle. You can see here in the rotate X, we can just change that to negative 45. Rotate that in on a 130 degree angle, negative 45. And we'll just go to each one and do the same thing. You can use F on your keyboard to focus into each one. It's a lot easier that way. Okay, so we have all the top ones done. Let's, now let's do the bottom ones. All right, so let's turn our character back on. And now we can preview the our lighting rig and we'll make some adjustments to 
to the intensity of some of these lights. So let's do a render view where we're going to render the current frame. Okay, so that's super bright. It's a little bit too bright. Let's actually change our layout. We'll go with a two panel layout side by side. So let's go to panels and we'll go to layouts and we'll go two pane side by side. Under this one, under panel, we can change this to our render view just so that we can see what we're doing. We can see the progress that we're making. So by default, these lights are all set to a, an intensity of, of one. So let's change the backlights to say 0.2. And just like we did in the uh, previous class, we had a key light and a fill light. This light we can leave on one. And our fill light, let's just change it to maybe 0.5 for now and we'll see how that looks. We'll do both fill lights on the left side to 0.5. And we don't want to have two key lights at an intensity of one because it's just going to be really bright. So we'll set this one to 0.5 as well. And now let's render that again and see how it looks. It's not as bright now. It's still a little bright, so we're just going to tone down some of these values a little bit. Because we have two key lights here, maybe we'll put them both at 0.5. And our fill lights, maybe we'll put them both at 0.2. And just keep making adjustments until it's evenly lit, but not too bright, not too dark. All right, so now we want this lighting rig to move with the character. So once it's rigged, there's going to be a master node that moves the entire character around. So when we get the character to walk across scene, for example, the entire character will go with the master node, which isn't here yet, because it's that's going to be done in the rigging class. But when we're done with the rigging, we want this lighting rig to be attached to the master control of the character. So right now, if we move this cage around, you see the lights don't go with it. So we're going to parent constraint these lights to the cage. And then later on, the, the entire lighting rig will be constrained to the, the character's master control so that the whole lighting rig will move around with the character anywhere it goes in the scene. To parent the lights to the cage, we'll select the cage first and we'll select one of the lights. We'll change this to rigging and we'll go to constraint and we'll choose parent constraint. Let's just go to the option box and make sure maintain offset is checked and we'll hit apply. Okay, so just very quickly now we can select the cage again and you can see now that the light is pink and that means that it's constrained to the cage and you can see that it goes with it now. So we'll do the same thing for each light. I'm just gonna select the cage first because the cage is gonna be the driver and then we'll select the next light and we'll hit apply. It's always good to just test it first and make sure it works. And then you can hit control Z to get it back to its original location. So we're just gonna go and select the cage first and go to each light and select the each light second and hit apply in our parent constraint options here. So let's just test that out really quick. I'm just going to move it back and forth and see how the lights are going with it. Now we're just going to do the spotlight. So there, now the lights follow the cage and later on the cage is going to follow the character. So let's go to our polygon shelf and let's click on a plane and we'll scale it up a little bit. Let's just move it above the grid a little bit. And we can actually move the cage up too. We can close our parent constraint options. We don't need that anymore. All right, so now if we render this again, let's see what we have. So it's still probably a little bit too bright. I would still want to make some adjustments to the lighting. But for now, let's just go to the next step and then we'll tweak it out later. Spotlight, this is going to be the light that actually casts the shadow on the character. So let's select the light and we'll go to our attribute editor. If you don't have it, hold down control and press A. And then under shadows here, we can use ray trace shadows or we can use depth map shadows. Depth map shadows aren't very high quality shadows as we talked about in the last class, but I just turned that on. We can just hit render to see how it looks. And it's not a very nice shadow. Let's just turn that off and we'll use, let's use ray trace shadows. So for ray trace shadows to work, you can see that I've turned it on, but if I render a frame, you can see we don't actually see any shadows. So for those to work, we have to go into our render settings under Maya software, we have to go down to where it says ray trace quality and we have to turn on ray tracing. Now if we render a frame, we can see that we have ray trace shadows. It looks like all the lights are casting shadows and they are. So I only want the, the spotlight to cast a shadow. By default, ray trace shadows are already turned on. So let's just go and turn those off. Just select each one and uncheck ray trace shadows. And now if we render the scene again, we can see that we just have the one shadow. So you can see how big it is. We want to make that shadow a little bit smaller. So we'll just move the spotlight up and that'll actually make the shadow a little bit smaller. We render that again. All right, so let's improve the quality of the shadow a little bit. You can see how it's got a really hard edge. Let's bring light radius up to about 1500. Let's just type in 1.5 
And the shadow rays, can, we can bring that up to about, let's bring it up to about 10. And we'll render that again. And you can see it gives us a nice, much softer shadow. So that's a real quick and easy way to get some nice even lighting on your character and a fairly nice looking smooth shadow. But of course you can use mental ray, just a higher quality shadow and, and lighting. And just use the same settings as last class. All right, so let's open up the hyper shade. Let's create a use background shader. Have it here and let's middle mouse button drag it right onto our plane. And you can see right away it disappears, but it's actually not gone. We can still select it, it's still there. If you go to renderer under viewport, if you change this, this, this is basically just how you're viewing your file while you're working. It's not going to change how it renders, but you can change it just to see. This is basically how Maya used to look in previous versions. So you, if you would like, if you prefer to work this way, you can. This is just something new they added, I think in 2015 or 14. But sometimes it's nice to work like this so you can see where the plane actually is. So we've already applied the use background shader. Now to see it, we need to look through the camera. We need to create a camera so we can create another camera. I'm just going to change my layout. I'm going to go to two stack to the right and we'll just change this to our camera view. Like panels perspective, camera one. And I'll make sure this is my perspective view. And don't forget you can go to view camera settings and turn on your resolution gate just to see what your camera framing is going to be. And we have it on 960 by 540. I would change it to HD 720. And your camera settings, just like we did last class, you want to go down, find environment, and you can change your background color to whatever color you like, but I always like to set it to white just for animation examples from doing a demonstration for my demo reel and save that. Okay, so once you do that, you want to go into your render settings down to renderable cameras. You want to change this to camera one. All right, so let's render a current frame. I'm not going to do it here anymore. Let's just render a current frame up here. Our used background shader has some reflectivity on it, so we're just going to go back to the hyper shade. Click on it and turn reflectivity right down to zero. And let's give that another render. And that's looking okay. Now at this point, I would probably tweak the lighting, do a render region. That spotlight's illuminating the top of his head, but we want to get more light on the front of him here. So if I crank this up to say 0.8, our top key light here, and we hit render region, we can make our adjustments this way. You can see it's looking a little bit better. Just making small adjustments. I'm going to go to 0.9, render another region. We change this to 0.5. So he's a little bit better lit here. Let's just open up our hyper shade again and let's actually throw a shader on this guy now. Very similar to what we did last class. We'll use a blend and let's double click on it to get the attributes up and I'm just going to change the color. Okay and we can middle mouse button drag that right onto our model. Let's give that another render. Then you can make adjustments to the color this way and just keep clicking your render region see the changes it looks way too shiny this way I would tone down the specular roll off also the eccentricity the eccentricity I would crank up to make the highlight bigger because on flesh the highlights aren't very sharp and on the specular roll off I would take it down quite a bit almost to nothing just for a little bit of highlight on the skin so their skin does capture some light but it's just not a really hot highlight That's just the shader, just so it has some color on him. Just so he has some color on him uh, while we're animating. He wouldn't render this way. He wouldn't render this way unless you left him like this. But we're going to be adding textures to our character. And once you add a texture to a character, the texture will actually render and not the shader. And on the character also, you'd want to get rid of reflectivity. You can see we have some reflections here. It kind of makes him look like he's made of porcelain. So you want to turn reflectivity off all the way. And you'd want to do the same thing on the eyeballs because these eyes have a fong texture on them. So you'd want to click on the eye white shaders and just bring reflectivity right down to zero. And that'll get both eyes. And then if we render that again, so we still have the highlights, but it's not reflecting like it's made of porcelain or something like that. And that's a nice amount of highlight for a character's skin. So again, you could leave it like this, but we want to get a variation of different color values on his face, like maybe a little bit darker on the eyes and different hues on his nose and ears. So that's why we're going to create some textures in the next class. We're going to lay out our UVs and create our textures. So save this file for the next class.